Welcome to Co-op Killed. In our co-op chat. <laughs> Baron? I was afraid you were going to put me on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting ready for the cold start. <laughs> not, not today. Not today. <laughs> I, I'm turning over a new leaf. <laughs> But yeah, it's welcome everybody time. to welcome. Co-op Chat. It's been a it's been a little bit since we had this. Unfortunately, it's got uh, we had some scheduling um, conflicts in there. So uh, but yeah, we try to do this as often as we can. Our live chat talking about various board game topics with a cooperative focus. So <laughs> yeah, I see lots of friends on the chat today. Lots friends, of... are we gonna sing our song? Friends are friends forever. <laughs> okay, I've never heard I don't that know song that <laughs> You've never heard that? Yes, you have. I just well, I might have heard. It. I don't recognize it. So I just don't know the song very well. We got uh, Dirty. He's really excited. Dirt, uh, nice to see you here, Dirty. He's excited because he got the high high roll for this morning. So that's awesome. <laughs> uh, hey, Robin. Of course, to to Baron answer is today's topic: new puppies. Yes, we might new. that might come up. <laughs> hey, Jess. Work words down. Yeah, I hear you, Jess. I just got back from vacation. I didn't realize how much I needed that reset. Um, hey, Papa Porter, good morning. Good morning, Greg. Nice to see you here. So, hey, Yogi, how's it going? <laughs> Other players using life happens excuses. They should practice playing board games. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ryan, I see you here. Cool. Okay. Lots of friends here this morning. Good to have you all here. You are what make this fun. Mm -hmm. Except, well, you know what? I would say present company makes this fun as well. Who, Steve? Who? Oh, yeah, Steve always makes it fun. Yeah, you These guys, are... yes. <laughs> wow, you guys are on fire today. Here, I thought I'd be on fire. I'm like, I'm not, I'm like barely cindering as opposed to how much fire you guys are putting out. Are... Steve always no, makes it fun. No, it was a late night for me. We were up late to uh, do some play testing, so, which was fun, but uh, yeah. I wasn't being late, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so what are we doing today for a topic? Today, we thought we'd talk about, um, what delays games getting to your table? So, like, you get a new game, and for whatever reason, and we'll talk about those reasons here, is how come it doesn't hit the table soon? Well, like, what causes it to maybe sit on your, Derek used the term, shelf of opportunity. <laughs> it's not, it's not, that's, not, that's not my term. That term I, I got from, I think I got it from Cynthia, I think. Yeah, that term flows around a little bit. So, yeah, so... <laughs> We'll talk about uh, talk about that from that standpoint. So, um, it's kind of like Zach's pile of opportunity when you got a bunch of great miniatures flying around your painting table. <laughs> and Jess has a really good one to start off with, and I definitely agree with this. More than one yep. Kickstarter That's arriving at a time. One of, the, one of the top five. You know, we should put like we. Oh, Steve, you have totally failed me. Oh my gosh, this is so. This is what we get for not thinking of a topic like maybe a day before. <laughs> Just imagine how cool this would have been. You could have made this like the family feud and you could have put up like all these little boxes and been like, okay, the top five answers are on the board. The Kickstarter arriving. Cool. Oh, and it comes up as cool. three. That would have been cool. I can do that for next yes, topic. Steve, I would never say you can't do anything. Wait. Yeah, I like that. This is a great <laughs> idea. Positive, right? So yes, I totally think you can do everything. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's make this happen. So there's also, since you mentioned that, um, I'm not ready to announce it yet, but I'll announce it pretty soon here. There'll be an addition to the co-op chat format. So let's just leave it at that for now. But yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Um. Hey, good morning, David. Nice to see you here. But yeah, let's uh, let's get that back to Jess's comment here. More than one Kickstarter arriving at a time. Yes, that's one of the top five answers. Yeah. So I guess, how do you prioritize what you're going to play, Barrett, when you get more than one? Well, how do I prioritize what I'm going to play? That's mm -hmm. a great question. Um, in order of excitement. And what determines that for you? How much I want to play it versus the other thing. Because, you know, sometimes <laughs> there's there's a lull in your life where you're like, oh, I just got to spend some money. So you just back some random game. And then all of a sudden you're like, hmm. And then that thing gets delayed, and all of a sudden it shows up with the on Trespass Odyssey, and you're like, mm, I think I know which one's going on the table, right? <laughs> so, no, I would I mean, a, a good example is actually when, like, I think they had, the, I would say, didn't the big three all arrive at one, like, small, yeah, it was big three, a roll arrived in, like, within a month. It was Aeon Trespass Odyssey, ISS Vanguard, and uh, it, was, it wasn't Osworn, it was, um, I think it was Osworn. It might have been Osworn, yeah. 
except for Derek. He didn't get his those warrants at least a month and a half after that. Uh, and so when it came to that kind of thing, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's hard because then it comes down to, because I do unboxings, it comes down to as I'm unboxing and looking at the contents and seeing kind of what they have in mind. Because when I do the unboxing, I've at least had a chance to investigate the rule book a little bit because I like to be able to tell people a little bit about the game instead of just not knowing what everything is. Um, and sadly, there's an inside joke about this because you know, <laughs> that was that his would you get Gloomhaven Beatles in a box or something? Was it called? <laughs> What's it called? I, I, I'm gonna mispronounce it, whatever it's called, buttons and butterflies or whatever it is, or Beatles or something. All right, and he he like he said to the polo says, Look what I got, and he like got his box, and he's like, Look, I'm gonna do an unboxing. He goes up, I've got things in here, and then here, here's some cards that are going to do things and i'm like oh he's killing me <laughs> you slowly with this advice oh look at these miniatures these are really cool i don't know who's going to be any of those and he's like <laughs> <laughs> where that hurts my soul yeah it would have been i think you were right this morning baron said that would have been a great april fool's joke video to release for people it would have well, been great it, it would be tough to re-put that stuff all in the box and do an unboxing <laughs> So stay tuned for Derek's unboxing on April 1st. I've already spoiled this prize. Uh, <laughs> so it really comes down to like, I, I, and yes, that's a great question because all those arrived. What was I going to do? Um, and then it came down to talking to Colin and deciding kind of what was he really interested in as well. So that's one of the reasons Aeon Trespass Odyssey, I think, was the last one to hit of those three. And it wasn't because I was, I was actually probably more excited about that one than the other one. But talking to Colin, he was like, hey, I really, we should really do Old Sworn together. Okay, well, then I got to get the video out for Old Sworn because the way we live stream, I like to do the, we always like to do the first mission as a recorded one because we can really go in depth on the rules. We can really show off the components and things like that. Because I really think when we live stream, that's our biggest problem is being able to show off a lot of the stuff as you're playing it where when you're recording it they're, they're, but when you're live playing you actually have a lot more of the emotion and the excitement and things like that happening um not to say that i'm not excited while i record because i certainly am uh but it, there's a lot more stopping in between to move cameras and shoot things and get things in position but it gives people a lot better idea of what's going on that's not this topic that's a different topic i think we've talked about that topic anyway i would say the excitement of, of them and then talking to Colin to see what would be a good plan for us. Are we planning to do any of these? Like right now we have Seventh Citadel and Kings of Ruin. Um, I'm doing unboxing of Kings of Ruin. Those are both going to have a big pause now because we're not sure which one we're going to do. If we weren't going to play either of these live, I would have to decide which one of those I'd want to play and which one goes in the show. And funny thing is, I think Seventh Citadel would hit the table and Kings of Ruin would go on the shelf for a while. What about you, Derek? How um, when you get more than one Kickstarter, what uh, what determines your order of operations? Um, that so varies because, like, look, it's the Easter Bunny. That's Bennett. Oh, it's Bennett, not the Easter. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my cool bunny ears. Those are your cool bunny ears. Mm -hmm. Thank you for showing them. Um, oh, I'm trying... so so. Right, what was it? It was oh, it wasn't oh, sworn. There was another game that oh, it was Mythwin. I was very pumped for Mythwin. I saw Steve's playthrough of it. I was like, oh, this is gonna be really great. Um, can't wait to get it, can't wait to get it. And it kept getting delayed, kept getting delayed on delivery, and I wasn't getting any responses. And I think like it, the hype of it fell off for me when I got in a different game. So I put the different game and then when it arrived, I just called it. So it was, I think it's timely arrival um, as opposed to anticipation. So right now the same thing's happening with Primal, right? Um, I think they, I think 60% of backers from the last update have already gotten their Primal pledges, which means the other 40% is still on the boat and still coming over. And then they're saying like their time for delivery isn't going to be until worse worst i think may is when i'm probably going to get the game what but by, but by that time i probably won't care and that may that may affect me bringing that game to the table because i'll be playing something else um and truly we should be of the mind of a game will get here when it gets here but we all have the stuff for wanting stuff so if 
as soon as Marvel United hits, if Primal ain't here, Primal ain't getting played. And so it's <laughs> and so it's just more my thing is what delays something from getting to the table when the hype of it for me diminishes so far because delivery has been delayed so long that I stopped caring about it. Two, if I'm already in a series or a campaign game, it'll go on the shelf. And by the time I finish the campaign, I probably have forgotten about it. For instance, Land of Galzir. It's on my it's on my shelf still in wrapping because I was playing Marvel United. And we finished the campaign that took a year, and I never uh, got back to it. It's still wrapped up in plastic in on my shelf. Would would you feel the same way if you weren't doing content, especially for the first one, when it comes to a timely delivery and that and that hype? Um, I'm going to split that into two sections. Okay. One, me, and two, what I'd like to be me. <laughs> so, okay. One, me. No, I probably wouldn't be playing a lot of board games. Um, two, like to be me. <laughs> One one is the realistic me that I that I've accepted, and two is the light, what what I aspire to. Um, I think I would probably have played it already if I wasn't streaming. Um, because I found it very. I'm an I'm an extrovert. So I enjoy, and, and it's all about recharge, but truly the, the attributes of an extrovert are encompassed in me. I love community-based things. So when I'm streaming, I'm in a community, and therefore I love playing games because I'm in a community. Yeah. Um, that's how my brain re re uh, treats it. Um, if I'm sitting by myself alone and I'm going to play a game, I'm probably going to go on YouTube and look up something like what's life like in Portugal. <laughs> so, or, or I or on my new kick of um, how to turn plastics into petrol. Like it, it's just, I prefer when I'm gaming that it's a community event because I, I love everybody and I want everybody. It feels like they're there with me and I'm not gaming yeah. by myself. So that's yeah. why you see me streaming a ton. That's amazing. That's absolutely so when you're not you're that's what you watch on youtube that's that's amazing right? <laughs> <laughs> i i have uh, yeah i'm i'm i mean steve is a lot of science steve, stuff well steve is the same way as well steve is an engineer i'm an engineer and so therefore yeah. i i look up engineering things my thing is i'm there ugh, there's so many topics there's kind of um, there's discussions about the black migration uh, out of the South and returning to the South. There's stuff about engineering, building recyclers that recycle not only the crap that they take from your porch, what actually happens to the stuff that they take from your porch, what's going on. And I, I look up world news. So I, ju I do all those things when I'm not streaming. I am in the medical field. I don't watch anything medically related. <laughs> Well, I'm also a huge I nerd. Watch, so. I, don't watch, like, I don't watch Grey's Anatomy. I don't watch like ER. I don't watch any of those things. I actually watch a lot. Almost all my stuff is either about the Vikings or it's about space. Those are the things I watch. Yeah, like, I, 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 I recently got into the three body problem, um, and I thought that that was just oh, that's the name of a movie. No, it's actually a scientific thing. Mm -hmm. And so I I started researching that and um uh femur's paradox and all this other stuff because of the show so now i'm researching it and i'm like oh i i didn't know it was called femur's paradox i knew what it was and so it, it was just interesting nice all right steve and how about you <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i tend to be pretty quick at opening up my my any rivals i get um it's rare to have a game stain shrink more than a week at my house, honestly. That's because you're obsessed with rule books. It, I mean, that's that's true. Here, here, here. Take this, please. <laughs> Take this and learn it and teach me this game. <laughs> no, that's the first thing I do. I rip it open, I grab the rule book, and then I'll just, I've got, I'll sit down and read. Just That's my leisurely reading, reading rule book, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'll do that pretty quick. Um, if I get more than one at a time, I'll... I'll normally, I'll... Just, sit down and start playing through games solo um just so i get the feel for like here's what i read 
here's how it works mechanically. I'm trying to get the feel for the game so I can sit down and teach it with other people. Because um, I'll normally try to sit down and play the game with my son if, if, if he's interested. Um, but um, I think that's a big one. But it, now that's if I get more than one Kickstarter coming out of time. And which one do I pick? Um, it really depends on how easy it is to table, I think, for me. Okay. Like, if it's a massive game, <laughs> I might wait a little bit before I get that to the table if I've got a quicker game first, right? Mm. So. Well, that's not a bad, that's not, that's a very interesting way of doing it is like uh, time wise, like how much, how long would it take to get that game on and played before versus other ones? Yeah. Because uh, I feel like if I could get the small one played quicker, I can get that off the table and then the, the big game can stay on the table longer because I don't have another game waiting to get played, right? I can right. I can keep it there for, for a longer period of time. Now, from the content creation standpoint, that also ties into which one I would go for first because if everyone's doing videos for Primal and I happen to get Primal and I have another game that's not getting coverage, I will switch that other game instead. Mm-hmm. Like, trying to fill that gap. Do you find, though, that so you get games to the table, but do games stay on the table long because you're switching between games? Do they stay long on the table? What do you mean by that? Elaborate. Well, you, you were saying, hey, well, I'll play this game, but then I see this other game, so I'll switch over to play this other game, and then I see this other game, so I switch over to play this other game. So how long do the games stay on the table as you're shifting? So, for instance... um. Uh, I, I I don't have an example because I I forgot what's in your collection, <laughs> well, <laughs> but but I think that uh, what what games, um, <laughs> what what games are what like do do they stay long enough for you to um, do you get a good play of the game or do you complete a campaign or whatnot because yeah I if you're asking if I play a game to completion. Almost never, when it comes down to it. It's really rare, and that has a lot to do with content creation. Yes. I think we've covered that in another video where it's hard for us to get a lot of those campaigns yeah. done because mm-hmm. the other games we want to show off and explain. Well, is it, though? I, yeah. So, so let me, for well, me, let me ask. For, for, mm-hmm. uh, well, towards Steve, I wonder, because one of the things you said is that when it comes, it doesn't stay uh, packaged long, So, which means you unwrap it. You put it on your on your table not your streaming table but your your table Mm -hmm. you know the on your main floor and so that doesn't get streamed that's where that's where you test bed that's where you play that's where you figure out the game but are you doing that with the mindset of should i stream this or not or are you doing it with the mindset of will i you know do i play this game you know i want to learn this game or is it both i don't know it's more of i want to learn this game or i want to just play that game okay. um the the kicker is like um myth one's a perfect example because we did a long series of that one already and if i see the analytics dropping i might at some point say well maybe i think interest is waning on this let's switch to something else right and when it comes to that type of stuff, it doesn't take long for those analytics to drop, right? Um, mm. Now, if you get feedback otherwise, like, hey, I really like this series, keep it going. No, I might keep going, right? Because I, I, I'm going off of feedback, right? And sometimes okay. I don't get feedback, so all I have to go off is the numbers. Um, okay. But that's the, that's the main thing is, like, I want to make sure I'm providing value for people that people want to watch and see it. If they're not, then I'm going to switch. That's what comes down to it. Um, right, but how does that affect the game on your on your test on your learn table? Let's call it your learn table. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> well, well, if it's a campaign table. game, I don't want to play it off camera because I want to maintain that continuity. Ah, okay. So okay. that's the big thing. Now, there's an exception to that. Ice of Iron Guard was an exception just because that's open world in a big way, and there's a lot of things you can do. And if you skip skip those in between parts, it's not a big deal. So okay. Okay. Um, that was okay. an exception, but generally I don't. Um, like Myth One, like I had the urge to play it, but like I probably won't because I don't want to lose the continuity, right? Oh, for the channel, gotcha. For the channel, so then, exactly. So, so then it becomes. So then will it become? And this this is probably leaning outside the scope of the question, but just final question here. So then, does it become a game that gets put on the shelf of opportunity because you don't want to break continuity? No. 
because it's already it's most likely already been played off camera. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, Eggmonia, for example, I did the first mission and I loved it, thought it was great. So did Robin. So continuity, it's up on our dining room table and we play it together. Well, I meant continuity from, from Steve's perspective. I believe it was coming from continuity of the stream. So that means that... I had all you... intentions of doing that on my channel, but now I'm not because Robin and I want to play it. I gotcha. Yeah. Where he's right. Play. Like um, when you guys said you want to see more of it, I'm more than happy to do it. Like I'm, okay. I love that game's awesome. I'm enjoying it. But it also is easier for me to be pause. honest to keep playing the same game over and over and over again because my yeah. Switch games <laughs> behind the scenes there's a lot of things behind the scenes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to prep for a play. Let's put it that way. So. Agreed. It's it's just more. Of, I I think I think I got a little confused then because I was just uh, when you were saying like you didn't want to break continuity. It, you're streaming Mythwind, then you're then you you see the analytics drop, so you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna pull that off off the stream. I'm gonna move to another game. But then, if someone says, "Hey, I want to see more Mythwind," are you saying no because we've already continued playing it elsewhere, so therefore it is no longer a streamed? Bit? No, that literally it's... happened just just the other day. I got a comment on one of the other. Actually, it was the review Mythwind review. Like, hey, I wouldn't mind seeing this and Robinson Crusoe hit the table again. I'm like. Okay, you know, maybe I will. So, you know, I'm not... Okay, okay, okay. Like, if people tell me they want to see more of it, I, I will do it. Okay, it. Like, okay, I, okay. I'm enjoying the game as much as if... Mm -hmm. if, I, if I get the impression that people are enjoying watching it, and I'm enjoying playing it, that's an easy thing to bring back to the table. It's okay. not a big deal to okay. me. So... Oh, um, last year, I had a great comment there. I opened mine right away and get some plays in. I play the one in, I'm in the mood for... Uh, I have multiple campaign games going, plus all the one-shot style games. And I've got something similar to that, where if you actually look at my channel, I probably got about four campaign games going right now. And it's just a matter of which ones do I decide I'm in the mood to put back on the channel. And like Steve said, I don't actually play them off-channel unless it's something that my 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 like Robin or the kids would want to play. So, for example, Madara's in the middle of a side quest right now, but I don't consider that a shelf game. I'm still playing it. Yes, I haven't played it in probably like six, seven months. Kingdom Death, I'm probably a month and a half back on to fight the Butcher. I still consider that a continuing game mm -hmm. going forward because I want to get to it some more. Aeon Trespass Odyssey, I want to get to too. What's up? Nothing. Okay. Uh, and then the uh, other, and then any other ones, like for example, Isofarian Guard, I don't consider a shelf game either. I still consider that campaign going. I'm waiting for the update. They, yeah, me too. I think we all are. <laughs> Same thing. Stars of Cario's ISS Vanguard. These I don't consider shelved games because I'm planning to bring them back to the table. Right. And a lot of the times, what am I going to record? And it's not something new or something that I'm really wanting to get to the table. Then it's one of those games I'll be pulling depending on what I'm in the mood for, as uh, Raphael says. Uh, yeah, so the the mood for me is difficult. Like I messaged I messaged the other day on my um on my Discord. I said, "Have you ever looked at all of your games and then analysis paralysis comes in, so you don't know what to pick, so you don't pick anything, and then you get mad because you didn't pick anything?" <laughs> That's where I get often. <laughs> Never get there. Where I'm like, I I want to play a game, I don't know what to play, so I start looking at the shelf, and I'm like, I don't know what to pick. They're all really good games, and then I like, okay, well I can't pick anything and then i'm mad because i'm like i don't have a game to play because i can't pick anything and i just start going in the spiral then you do all your games a number and you roll a die and then when you roll the die and you, you know it lands on one you play that game unless you don't want to and then you realize wait i didn't want to play that game and then you roll again i used to use h index for that actually well, of course you did why would you just not roll a die <laughs> 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 of so course some big mathematical engineering <laughs> to figure out what game to play. <laughs> yes, I. So I used to log my plays. I honestly don't do it anymore. Um, but when I logged my plays, I if I didn't know what to play, I would go look around the H index value for me, and then I would pick a game around that around that to get played. Now, H index is if you take all your games and you order them by most played to least played. Your H index value is when the rank in that list matches the number of plays. So let's say you played um, you played five games five times, and then your sixth game you've only played four times, right? So your top five games you've all played five times or more, right? So your H index would be five in that sense. If you played your sixth game, 
five times, it would still only be H index five. And you have to get all of them played to six to make it H index six, right? Six or higher. You make it a game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was gonna make a YouTube video of him standing there talking all about H indexes and all this stuff. Like that sounds like a 10, 15 minute YouTube video that you could watch on YouTube on like like I watch for like how does hyperspace work and how does well, like, it's built into <laughs> um, if you log your plays in like Board Game Geek, it's built into the statistics. So you can just look it up. It does Yeah, it yeah. No, I, I get it. I, but it's um, like, it's so like, yeah, you know, so that was a nice way of your, with yourself. I yeah, that's why you figure out what to play. And then the nice thing about that is uh, when I felt like the bigger H index I have the more value I was getting out of my collection mm, at the time. Makes sense. Right. Makes Cause sense. I'm, I have, I've always... a guy and you get to play something magical. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, his, his think of, think of yours as an RNG game. His is a campaign game because it's, it's <laughs> well, you, is, want, no. you want to equate all those numbers up. Yeah. So you're like, I have no. played this. His is a, a crunchy Euro is what <laughs> his is. I love it. I, 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 I'm I, a nerd. Actually, <laughs> I, Steve, Steve, I'm right there with you. I'm actually like, Hey, that sounds pretty cool. I might do that. <laughs> that work. I like Robin's comment. She says, "Thanks, Derek." Now I'm reading about three body problem, and I've already had to look up four <laughs> words in the article. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right. So, well, the the other thing I bring up. <laughs> what's that? Sorry. What, what what's another one that we can think of that the reason we don't get things to the table? This one's a big one for me, and that well, is previews. Mm -hmm. So if I have been talking with a publisher and they're like, Hey man, I'd love to help you out with a preview. And then the demo shows up that takes priority over anything else because I have made an agreement. Oh. Now to be completely honest, I don't do paid <laughs> stuff. So there's no money exchange whatsoever, but it doesn't matter to me because for me, if I said I'm going to cover this, that is, that is my agreement. I need to honor that agreement. So that takes priority over everything else. And then unfortunately that means, well, maybe I'm playing this one game, which I got this new kickstart. And I really want to play this new one. And plus that's a full game as opposed to like a partial game. So that, that does play a factor quite often for me. No, that does make sense. Um, that's, uh, it's funny because when we did our Q and a people, what was one of the questions that uh, we had was, do you guys get review copies and how often? And a lot of time, and our answers were almost never because we don't want that problem, which, we, we don't want that problem. We don't want the problem of, hey, we got a game and we've said yes to it. Yes, we don't get paid for it, but we still feel obligated to at least get some content done for it because we because we like to help people's dreams come true. And we've already said yes. And this, if we don't do something, it could have been given to somebody else who could have done something for it. You know what I mean? Oh, you talking about a review copy. Are you talking about yeah. like, hey, here's the full game to help you cover Either the game? One. Or are you talking about a demo, which is like a... Either one. Either okay. one. Okay. Because I, I, I both both put you in an obligation that we don't want to be in. Okay. So Steve, uh, so Steve, yeah. the uh, question question towards that because that's an interesting one. Um, does that affect how you feel about the preview? Like on 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 some subconscious level that it, it's not okay. Well, I'll play this preview because I it was my you know we said we we're going to do this. This was a deal to do it. Um, but you but this other game came in I really want to play, but it has to wait because I have an obligation. Is there a subcon... Well, you, it's subconscious, but is there a a hmm. feeling of more judgy towards the preview game because it's kind of like holding you back from playing the game you want to play? Um, I don't know. I don't think so because um, when I reach out to do a preview, it's normally a game I'm interested in anyway, right? Like, hey, man, I like this sounds cool. I'd love to help you out type of thing. So I'm already interested in it. If I was being sent previews without that, because, you know, small channel, right? So it's always, it's generally always me going reaching out saying, hey, yeah, let me help you out. Um, if there's the other way around, people are just, hey, would you be interested to cover this? I might feel that way, but I don't think currently that is the case. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Raphael has a good comment here. It says, you guys yeah. have all these issues to two channels, which is yeah, true. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. This is all very channel-based. Uh, we've really made this channel-based as opposed to uh, human-based. human, human that, that might be get fixed in the future. Let me just mention that. So, uh, But yeah, my, my main reason I can't Wait, get what? a game to the table is my wife <laughs> expected me to spend time with her, not with my lovely multi-expansions chock full of... Uh, something got cut off there. Minis. Oh, mini games. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Um... So luckily, I don't really have that problem because 
Um, Kim plays games with you. Yeah, Kim plays games with me, exactly. <laughs> and my son will often do it too, though lately he's right. been very much into the video game world as opposed to the board game world. So he's getting to be that age, which is fine. But uh, yeah. Um, I have this problem. And this problem has only started within the last year. And even if it's in the last six months. Um, this is one of the biggest problems for me right now when, when it comes to the challenge of getting stuff recorded into the table. Sure, I do live streaming with Colin about every Tuesday, but I try to do a painting video. I haven't gotten many of those done. And if you've noticed, a lot of my videos right now are either are mostly unboxings uh, because I haven't had a lot of time to get the table. I get Mondays off, which is usually the only day now I, use, I get to record. Um, but we have a few things that have happened in life that have changed that now all of a sudden I'm losing a lot of this time. Um, and I think time to me is the biggest factor of what games get to the table and when. Now, I'm not just talking about the channel. I'm talking about playing games in general. Um, there's a lot. We I don't feel we get enough time in the life that we're leading right now to be able to get these games to channel. Of course, this could change by doing things. But number one, we got a brand new puppy that needs to be looked at almost all the time or it, you never know what it's going to do. Uh, and so we're usually in a room with this puppy and this puppy, it, it, you can't really keep your eyes off it all the time, but it, when it does sleep, we get our, get some of our time back. The other one is right now I'm absolutely blessed by the fact my 14 year old actually wants to hang out with me. Um, and we, and he likes to play video games. So we've been playing a lot of video games together. Mm. And so it, I've, it, so he's usually up till 10 o'clock at night playing video games with me. And I, by that time, then it's like, okay, let's go to bed. And I'm not that I've lost any time that I would have done to play a board game. <laughs> We've been playing a video game. We've been looking through Final Fantasy VII. Um, yes. Otherwise, if we don't watch the dog, it will eat plaster. <laughs> so, I mean, these are the kind of things you have to watch out for with the puppy. They might eat plaster. Yeah. So, it, time itself is, I think, the biggest factor as to why games don't get to the table. Um, I, more than anything else, in all walks of life. Does I think the style of game or length of play of the game... Is that a big factor mm. to you, like a campaign game versus one-off or like yes, a long-form game versus a short-form game? 100%. Okay. Um, there's also the, the, the things that influence whether or not a game gets to the table when you don't have a lot of time is setup, takedown, mm -hmm. uh, uh, average hour of play or odd time of play, and then and um, how easy it is to learn. Uh, so like we just got Cubitos uh, is another game we just got. If you don't have that game, fantastic game. If you like Quacklenburg, that game is even better. Uh, the It's easy to get table. It's easy to teach. And it's fun to play because it's simultaneous. So everybody gets to play at the same time. So it works really well with our family. Uh, and we've been trying to get those type of games to the table. And those are the ones that get to the table as opposed to something like Mr. President is not going to get to the table. <laughs> but you enjoy it. <laughs> I do enjoy it. And the funny thing is my 14-year-old enjoys it too. So that's actually a big plus. So Really? Might, oh, yeah. He loves it. He loves, uh... little, uh, he loves rolling the die for me and then me telling him what he just did to me. <laughs> i need to i still have that game on the on the shelf of opportunity to just kind of rip down mm -hmm. and learn so i'm i might uh sure. i might be hitting you up i, I call it a Raphael's comment here sure short form game that's why marvel united is one of my top played games yes well yeah. it's also because it's an amazing game it is <laughs> game, that's for sure those are those are way easier to get to the table and play uh -huh. Then I think, the, like, for example, like my wife said, we've been playing Eggmonia. We haven't had a chance to play it in a while because it does have a longer t setup time. The length of play is usually a lot longer than yep. we have time for right now um, in our life. So I think uh, unless anybody's willing to donate the winning lottery ticket to me, uh, <laughs> of, this is going to be kind of my life for a while. Uh, just because as you go through life, things change. Like when my kids were really young, I had a lot more time to get these games to the table, almost any game. I had no problem getting any game to the table because kids are young. They sleep a lot more. They're like, kids are down by 7.30 and all of a sudden you've got till 10 to do something. That's plenty of time to hang out and do stuff. Yeah. Uh, now that your kids are teenagers, they stay up as late as you do. And like I said, if my son didn't want to hang out with me, I'd probably be doing board games. But he wants to hang out with me, which is fantastic. I'd rather yeah. have that over full hand a board game by myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, you've you've you found the solution to the problem. Just yeah. be rich. Just be rich. Simple. Be rich. Simple, right? It simple. is simple. Simple solution. <laughs> or you can be, like, or you can or you can get one of those jobs that like two three twelve hour shifts. Oh my gosh! And, and then you can have like four days off and do some things. I, I've I've thought about it, Derek. Really? 
Yeah, but they don't. I'm not, one, my wife would kill me. And <laughs> they don't even offer those where I work. But I, that's one of the reasons I have four tens. It's nice to have that Monday where it's something that I can I, I can do it for board games or I can use that time to uh, get anything done in life that I can't normally get done Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Gotcha. We got a question from Papa Porter here. I think it's a good one. What other games are good that are similar to Marvel United, meaning short form, easy to get to the table, stuff like that? Dice Throne. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, that's more PvP. Oh, no. you... There's, there's a PvE there. the option. Well, there's, right? a, there's Dice Throne Adventures, but that lengthens the time to is the it table. Long, is it a long game? Okay. Yeah, it, it's a long game. That's okay. easy to learn and fast to play. Yeah, Dice Throne. Um... Raphael mentioned uh, Hero Realms and Star Realms, um, which, yeah, definitely those are quick ones for sure. Yep. Uh... Hmm. Anything you play with Derek is not going to be super Well, cool. the reason why I say it's not fast is because it, your your setup time, is, we talked about setup time, and play time is fast. Setup time isn't because you got to get all the cards together. You got to build I mean, the deck. It's like, it's like saying Legendary is a fast game to play. It is once it's set up. Yeah. But you have to set it up. I would yeah, say none um, of the games you see behind me would be one. Of the <laughs> I, lately, what's been hitting our table quite often, actually, it's just on my table right now, it's a uh, Sky Team, but that is only Ooh. a two player game. Oh, yeah. That game's fun. Yeah, it's really fast, that. really fun. Just a two, yeah. two player game. You can't, you can't play it. Well, I think there's some solo, like, ma, um, house rules you can do, but it's not. Oh. It's, by far better co-op so no. um spire's end is a fast game um uh set a watch is a fast game one deck dungeon i'm just looking over what i have any of the unlocks and things like that yeah any of the unlock games but then you're playing it basically giving it away um, or recycling it uh solar storm is a fast one um Aeon's End is is not. not <laughs> you fast. have to set it up, and Aeon's End has a it's lot not a fast game. Of time. Yeah, it's like Marvel Legendary too. It takes a while to set up. So. Yeah, that's why I was like, Marvel Legendary is a quick game to play once it's yeah. set up. <laughs> Aeon's End is that same thing. I would probably list V Sabotage actually, in that mm. V Sabotage is really times. easy to set up. No, it's going to be played a hundred thousand times. It's like it's like if, if some I was to tell people somebody, hey, Kingdom Death Monster is super fast to play. It's because I've never everything memorized. I just go poop it out on the table, and all of a sudden, oh, I'm going. I don't have to look up anything. I don't got to do anything. I just play. <laughs> was that KDM? Oh, yeah. It's like, well, say, yeah. That, game, that game's fast to play. I was honestly I was thinking about that with Spirit Island for me because Spirit Island can I can get played really quick. But that's because yeah. I've played it yeah. once, right? I, I'd probably say the the fastest game I have in my collection to set up, fastest bar none, is Gentle Rain. Gentle Rain. Yes, it is the fastest setup game. It is the most relaxing game that you can play after a frustrating day, and it is incredible. Hence the name of the game. Yeah, you you the game well, is in a box rain. that is this big. So it's a very it's a very calming game. It's called Gentle Rain. It's not called Torrential Rainstorm. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, tsunami. Like, tsunami or, if we're talking quick setup yeah. and quick play, honestly, Mythwind could be considered to that. The setup is uh, true, insanely true. fast. True, and the play true. doesn't have to be that long once you get used to it. Now, Kim mentioned uh, Mars, and she's talking about um, Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition, because we've been yeah. playing that a lot lately again. Um, that is pretty... It, it's a longer game to actually play, but setup and, and overall down. play of that one is pretty quick for us. So. I, uh, I, uh, I, I've uh, never played a game in my life where I got alpha gamed out of control except for that game. Oh, Ares Expedition. Yeah. I had a plan... I was like, I'm going to do this. And my wife said, absolutely not. You're doing that card because then we got to do this so we can get this. this, one. <laughs> this, one, this one, we're going to win. I'm like, okay. We're gonna play this card. Uh, we won. Don't be wrong. We won. Yeah. Drop the game you, really good. Of, of course you can go old school. If you want a super fast game, you can play Uno. <laughs> we do that quite a bit. That's a very, that's actually one we play almost every other night. Do you there play? Isn't, um, isn't Nemesis really fast too? <laughs> we, get we get done like two moves too soon too soon <laughs> too soon uh, we, we have multiple versions of uno we've got uno we got uno flip uh, there's a new one called like there's another uno game we're planning to get i forget what it's called right now we're doing uno flip do you play do you play uno 
with the with street rules yes. or do you no, play the, the, the hoity toity proper rules <laughs> we play the proper way we don't play by the oh okay you can just draw until you can play something and just wait to screw your neighbor no we don't do that Ah, uh, boom. <laughs> game would never end. I did not help the game. You. My plan was good. Yours is bad. <laughs> that actually is probably more true than anything else. <laughs> yep, yep. Don't see that. <laughs> uh, so, so when someone, so when someone drops a draw two, and you have a draw two, you can't put it down. You have to draw two. Correct. Yes. Boom. <laughs> I have, no, we, we... Uh, I, I, when I, uh, as I was growing up in elementary school, when Uno was, uh, you know, Uno was played a whole different way, and so um... Uno has a lot of different rule sets too. It's yeah, yeah. Because uh, uh, my son likes uh, Minecraft Uno because it's Minecraft, and that one has slight tweaks to the formula as well. So see, so we even play those. We even play those games. It's not just these big name board games that we play. We play Uno. We play Just Get Ten. There was another game that Steve, see the Steve or Barrett mentioned that you all were saying was a good family game, and it's it, it's Cubitos. was what what Cubitos Quacks of Quacklenburg. Those are two no, it games. wasn't it wasn't that one. It was something else. I can't remember, but I remember one of you talking about it and saying, "Oh yeah, this game is old and it's incredible," and I can't remember what it does. Hmm, not sure. Uh, Rocky, I was got another quick question here. Uh, which are faster to play, including setup and teardown, Euro or Ameritrash? Depends. So, just to bring everyone up to speed, when you use the terms Euro and Ameritrash, what does that mean? Euro is point chase. generally point based game. We go for victory points. It tends to be not a lot of direct combat. It could have a lot of conflict with between players, but not combat necessarily. And Ameritrash tends to have a lot of dice rolling. Yeah, um, it depends. A lot, lot of theme generally, but these terms are fairly. Uh, the value of those terms doesn't exist as strongly as it did in the past anymore because mm-hmm. a lot of games are, are uh, merged between two of them. So, yeah. but yeah. to, to it, answer your question, it depends. Yeah, it really does. Hadrian's hey, Wall's fast to set up and play. It is. So is Gentle Rain. It depends. And yeah. some Ameritrash, you can with lots of dice chucking stuff like. Um, well, Zombicide could take a while to set up, right? Something like that. But it depends yeah. on the map. Yeah, it depends on the map. So, but it could be quick too. So, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if the the style game would. No, it, it has to do with what the what the publisher or the creator of the game was planning on. Was he wanted a big long type game that's going to be that's going to take a lot to do? Like, I mean, if you look at uh, like it was like Colin does a lot of Zaya. I think <laughs> I don't know what that kind of game is compared to some, but. I miss so much. What are we off topic on now? <laughs> <laughs> We're so off topic. Okay, we've been on and off for about the last. I think we've. I think we've been on topic. I'd say about fifteen minutes and off topic for half hours. Probably. <laughs> uh, Dirty said the Leviathan Wilds. That's a really good option for a short form yeah, game. Yeah, that's a short. That's one. a good one. That's not out yet, by the way. It is delivering maybe this next month? Um, I will definitely be covering that game. That game is amazing. Yeah. yeah. I think Colin yeah. back that one. Yep. Yeah, oh, don't... Deep Rock. Does it take long to set up? That's not. Uh, it's about, that's not too bad. Be honest about that. Be honest about that for someone who's bad. never played it. <laughs> you've never played it. Yeah, it'll take a while for sure. Now, I think that's going to change. I actually was just um. So uh, frequently, Pickle. Um, he's Ryan on the chat here, right here, <laughs> right here. This this guy here. Uh, we'll we'll play games um almost every week, just something random, and we jumped on the. Deep Rock Galactic mod on Tabletop Simulator, and they updated with all the new stuff. So I was looking through all that stuff, and that game, one, that new stuff is looking awesome. I'm really excited to get that to the table. Ooh. But two, it looks like it's going to be a longer form game now with the okay. new stuff. So, oh, Yeah, Mike, don't worry. I know you're not a story guy. <laughs> I still love you. Can you think of anything else that would keep a game... I mean, maybe just interest in general, like something you've backed and... Then you decided, like, as, as it got closer to fruition and you finally get it, you're kind of like, this really wasn't what I was hoping for when I was when I was interested in getting it. And now you have it. And then you're like, eh. And do you even, by that, do you even bother at that point? Or you just kind of say, bye. I call it. I call it. Yeah. Yeah, Honestly, I, I don't think that's, that's happening. Like, burn cycle. 
like when I finally got burned, so I was kind of like, oh, this would be kind of cool. And I put it on the table and I spent like two days trying to learn this game. And I was kind of like, pack, 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 pack. <laughs> <laughs> if I have to spend more than two days trying to learn a game and realizing halfway through it, I'm kind of like, eh, not digging this. It wasn't what I was expecting. Then it's pack, 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 pack. There's many games. Uh, Bantam West was one for me where I was oh, expecting yeah. a proper, a promised proper solo mode. And it was just one scenario. That's true. And I packed it up and got rid of it. Um, but Mike's point is 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 valid where he said that if it has a story, it's not going to hit the table. So that will keep it from the table. So preference of, I don't want story, I want something else. But then in theory, you just wouldn't be gravitated toward those games. But you might pick one up by accident. Once yeah. again, you're kind of like, wait, this wasn't what I was hoping for. Yeah, yeah. Or else you get shocked and you're like, that game was amazing. Burn Cycle and Voidfall are both tougher learns and long stuff. That's true. Especially Voidfall. Oh my god. Now, don't Steve's, get me wrong. Really I, great, but... I like learning hard games. I mean, heck, I had a 100-page rulebook for League of Dungeoneers. Learned that one. Played it like crazy. Uh, but just sometimes the theme, and once I start playing it, it just doesn't catch for me. Like, uh, Mr. President, I played only through a half of a, of a whole of one season so far in that. Um, having And I've set it up twice to do it, and I've only played through half of the season. <laughs> and I'm loving it. I think that game's great. I have absolutely a... a the absolute fun time playing through it. I absolutely love it. Can hardly wait to get it to my goal is to actually get it to the table. I'm my plan to actually get that game done is Colin usually has to take a two week vacation. It's mandatory for his <laughs> occupation. <laughs> and so in that time, that's two weeks. We're not going to be streaming. So that two weeks, I'm actually probably hopefully going to have that game on my table and slowly record through the entire four years of that game. That's my plan um so in may i plan to ask you a ton about that <laughs> <laughs> i'll remember it by may oh i'll remember it by may <laughs> speaking of which if uh people haven't heard um we are planning uh well derek and i are flying out to minnesota to mega, meet with barrett and colin in may mega so, game of palooza a major yeah. game of palooza so it'll be fun times it's gonna be good if I can get things right, maybe we can even try to stream a game together. Oh my god! That'd be awesome. Kim and Kim, Kim says, and Kim, "Don't forget her." Kim will be there too. Yep. Rob, Rob, we'll put yeah. a six-player game together. Oh, it has to be Nemesis. It has to be Nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> Mega game of Palooza. Game of Palooza at the table. You got it. Add me at the table. <laughs> <laughs> Raphael says, "I think table space can influence how often we can get the table to. I can get a game to the table. A lot of game, new games are sprawling with table hogs, which is true. Yeah, mentioned I'm, earlier how like I will prioritize a small one to get those done and played yeah. before I'm I keep a big one on table for a long period of time." And goes, <laughs> <laughs> Six so, player Spirit Island, yes, dirty. <laughs> no, my uh, brain, so, my brain can't I was, take it. I was actually just talking to Colin about what Raphael has to say. Um, because we stream on Tuesday, but then I also try to record games. Like I said, I've been doing a lot of it. And one of the reasons I haven't been doing it is because on Tuesday we do the live stream and then I've got to pull everything off that table in order to put down the next game. And of course, all the games I'm doing usually have big setups and takedowns yeah, to the yeah. problem. And when we're playing live, I don't know about you guys, but we are not the most organized person. There's a lot of times like, okay, so the card is, this one says we're going to have to go th three spaces and do that. And then the card goes over there. Let me just throw it across the table and <laughs> the file. That's usually how we do it. We just not go to the bottom of the deck. Does it go to a nice discard pile? Nope. Throws the, throw the side of the table. Boom. Everything just goes. So by the time we have these two piles of the and we're done recording. Uh, so what's, when, on those days, I'm pulling everything off in order to put another game on. I've kind of found a solution to this where I can at least pull the three cameras off and I could cover the table and put another game on top of the table to record. But then, of course, I have to get that done by Tuesday, or I have to pack all that up and pull it off. So we have come in, we've, this is something we've run into a problem with is table space. Um, Colin kind of gave me a solution, but it's, it, it, I have to, we have to expand on this and that's actually potentially moving the live streams to his house because his table is twice as big as mine. And there might be a way to set up our stuff at the one end of the table where he puts his recorded stuff on the other end of the table, <laughs> but then I can't do painting videos. So we have something we have to decide. Um, you know and then on top of that, we were thinking about only playing tiny epic games from now on. <laughs> That's my wife wants me to. Yeah. So, I, I heard there's another solution too. If you know someone who can make, who does woodworking, you can try yeah. to get a table. Yeah. It might take a few years though. 
<laughs> Shots fired. Shots or fired. the other option is you actually rent out a one like one like a, a, an office studio space, and then you have your streaming stuff there, and then you don't have to worry about it. And you have your own stuff at home. That's the other option. Yeah. Of course, um, in order to do that, again, if somebody can email me the or, or mail me the winning lottery ticket, that that's something that could happen. <laughs> We were not actually on- yogi's correct the t- tiny big games do take up a lot of table space they're it's funny because they pack up really small but when they you unpack them they take up as much space as, as, as yeah most average games I've actually, there. yeah i've seen them in action i'm like oh that's not as tiny as <laughs> the chat gamma slam <laughs> there you go there you go <laughs> <laughs> um so but coming back to the point of table space i really think for me right now that is kind of an issue and i'm working around it i've been working kind of working trying to figure this out for about six months as to how to do it and i like i said just recently found if i pull the cameras i can cover the table and play on top so that cool. does help a lot cool. uh, well so table space is a con i i don't want to say it's just the content creator problem but no. it, it's i if you if you're not if you're i when i started i was on a table that was four by two and i played big games i just put crap on the floor (laughs) so i mean that's why i'm saying like it's it's manageable if you're not streaming yeah um if you are streaming then it barent what you're saying yes 100 but it also is going to influence what you play because you can only ever have that one game on unless you want and if it takes a long time to set up and tear yeah, down really yeah the set up tear down yeah yeah i, I can't argue with that and yeah. so all of a sudden i got hey i look i just got boxorama i can hardly wait to play boxorama but right now i have a uh, table yeah. hog 32 on my table i don't know <laughs> i i think i'll put this over here for now until i'm done with table yeah, hog 32 yeah. Yeah. And, oh, I've done a Table Hog 32 in four years. I'm going to pull, uh, I don't know what the end are. These sound like amazing games that I want to back on Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> all in my head, man. I got some great ideas. <laughs> None. No ideas. Oh, interesting, Mike. Uh, to what Baron said earlier, Purple Haze now has more story than way back when I supported it, so it may never get table when it finally arrives. But those situations are rare for me. Yeah. Purple Haze. I, yeah. I've I was looking for that one for a while, too. That, uh, that's a, that's an a, alcoholic beverage from my memory. I don't know what that is as a board really? game. Really? I've heard of it as a deep purple song. No, it's no, a, sorry. it's a war game. Yeah. Isn't that Purple Haze? Isn't that Jimi Hendrix? Uh, it might be. Might be. Maybe not Purple Haze. Actually, I think it's something. Dang it. Now somebody's. I'm, I'm getting Purple Rain and, and, and the Haze song it's mixed Prince. up. <laughs> Prince. Prince, right. right. <laughs> Good news, they're both dead, so at least I got that part. Good news, oh my god! Purple, (laughs) good news, both those guys are dead. So so. at least I got they got something in common, they got something in common. They're both dead. Um, I don't know, there's there, and there's a lot of factors that I think, even but like, (laughs) sorry, Derek. (laughs) Um, but like, so yeah, that's. (laughs) Purple, purple, deep purple was a band. Yes, it was. Deep purple was a band. They did. They didn't do. Oh say, my gosh! Yeah, Who's correct? Yes. <laughs> Smoke oh, on the water. There yeah. you go. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. Jimmy Hendrix. They, was he the one who? Is it called Purple Rays? <laughs> Quick pivot. All right. <laughs> Quick pivot. Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> so board games are great. Oh, it's football. <laughs> board game. <laughs> to be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bear, just stop. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry if you lost some subscribers, Steve. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. oh gosh. Well, there you go. That's 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 the way you win this game. Well, I know we had a hard stop, and I don't think yes. we can top that. So let's, <laughs> let's wrap this up a little bit and uh, uh, share what we got planned uh, coming up this week. Uh, Derek, what do you got coming up? Um, Cthulhu Death May Die is tomorrow. Um, I just got my Marvel Champions Age of Apocalypse expansion and Heroes of the Shire, so I'm going to figure that out, and I don't know what I'm going to play next week. Variant, what you got? Wait, Marvel Legends, you said? No, Champions. Champions, Age of Apocalypse. Oh, oh okay, that game. I will never play that game. thing. Yep, I've I've vetoed everything about that game. Um, and actually, no fun ever playing that game. Uh, that is on my games that everybody loves that Barrett will never play. 
Every time I've played it, I've been bored and walked out. Uh, uh, Papa, I live in Charlotte. If you move here, let me know. We play yep. some games. There you go. Uh, so anyway, uh, what do I got? Well, uh, Kings of Ruin is going to be hitting the channel today uh, in the unboxing of it, if I have time to edit it all together. Um, and then I'm going to be doing a painting episode for Kings of Ruin because I have the not Sundrop pledge. Uh, and then I'm going to do a playthrough of Kings of Ruin, hopefully on maybe Monday. I don't know. I don't think I'll have time on Monday to get it done, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, and then uh, the, oh, what else do I have doing on? I don't even know what else I'm doing. Oh, Carl and I are playing Primal on Tuesday. Sad. That'll be sweet. I'm not jealous at all. No, why would you be jealous? We played it last week. It was epic. We can hardly wait to return. I apologize, but I like this will be poor, poor, poor Derek. By the time he gets to be like, oh, everybody's. I, I pro I'm. I, I would like to believe that I'll still be excited for it, but there are other games that said they're coming in, and this is what's going. It. I don't know. We'll I see. think you're going to be as excited as Osworn, and you're going to love to play, it, and then all of a sudden find something out about it and be like, eh. Oh, but also, and I gave a fair shot. I, I yeah. gave a fair shot. I think you'll give this a fair shot too, and I think you'll, I think you'll like it. But it might not be one of those things that hits home. Okay, okay. I, I, but I don't know. I, but I mean, I don't know how much you like hand management stuff. So anyway, uh, those three, those four things, I think are coming out now. What Colin doing? I have no idea what Colin's doing. He's going to put some on the table and record it. Uh, <laughs> and that's, and that's, I mean, he, if you want to talk about a guy kind of like when you're talking about oh i'm looking at all these games i don't know which one to play colin has is like that too but he has no problem all of a sudden being like oh my gosh this one <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like his it's so awesome to hear about what he's decided to play it's like i just hadn't played this in like over a year and i looked at it but i gotta play that game i gotta play that game it's like all right that's awesome you gotta play that game yeah. Yeah, I will. I will be. I'm not going to be playing more, uh, Primal Solo. Actually, Pac Man's going to join me and it'll become our Thursday game. Um, so hopefully that will you know, keep the hype going. Anyway, I know we're at time. Steve, what do you put? What do you got? My coming? computer just wanted to tell me it's Easter tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, what do you got coming? Um, we got, uh, I got a preview need to edit, and that one I'm hoping will drop tomorrow if I get edited yeah. quick enough. Um, one hit heroes. Which, um, Mike from One Stop Co-op Shop put this on my radar. Um, and I know Colin got a demo copy of it, so you yeah. guys will be coming too and meet me at the table. It is a really fun game. You guys need to check this out. Cool. It's really cool. He's loved it. He absolutely loved it. Yeah, it's it's a really good game. So be on the lookout for that one. It's coming to Kickstarter in April. I'm not sure exactly when. I have to look it yes. up again. But I think it's April. It's by the same people that did the five minute series, but yes. this isn't a five minute game. It's not like it's not. Oh. Same okay. as the in a game. Yeah, yeah, it's a very different game, but it's really, really well done. Really well done. Okay. No, but it's, I love it's a, it's a deck dungeon. builder, and the whole yeah. premise is you're playing as heroes with only one hit point. Yeah. So if okay. anyone takes damage, you everyone loses the game. Oh, wow. And it's, it's okay. also kind of a boss battle at the same yep. time. It's a boss battle. Yep. All right. I look forward to seeing y'all's videos. On so, that. yeah, be on looking for that one. That's going to drop pretty soon. And then, um, if it's not Sunday, it'll be early next week. Um, and then Monday, my original thought was to do Orange Shell Overcome, do another scenario of that one to show you how different it is. Mm. It is also April 1st, so I may do something random because you got to have some fun with April 1st, right? Uh, not Derek's necessarily a joke per se, but just something random. Um, <laughs> and then Wednesday will be Co op Corner because it's the first Wednesday of the month, so that will be coming, uh, talking about upcoming cooperative games for the month of April, and then also a uh, live QA. So if you guys have questions, uh, we can chat then with anything, anything, anything you want to talk about. So, like what Steve likes to eat on Friday. There you go. We can find out that day. Yep, exactly. Cool. Now, now I have to cool. Ask okay, I think that is all for today. So thanks everyone for joining, and we'll see you next time at the guild. Goodbye, Bye -bye, everybody. Everyone.